this video, we are going to be nitrating hair, which is something that I really don't think has been addressed before on YouTube, at least. Really haven't found anything regarding it anywhere, even off of YouTube. Um, won't find it with a quick Google search, of course. And the reason for that is probably that hair doesn't nitrate that well, but I'm sure that it can form nitrate esters in some way. And hopefully we'll see that formation and it'll burn better than hair regularly does. And I'll take some regular hair and compare it to the nitrated hair. And we'll see the difference in burning or the rate of the burn. Now you might be wondering what in hair could be nitrated. Well, actually hair is a protein um, called keratin, or at least it's mostly comprised of keratin. And keratin is this big long protein that gets tangled up with other uh, helixes of keratin and there it's a sulfur containing compound that's why when hair burns it gets really stinky but uh, we're going to be taking advantage of that long chain structure that has a decent amount of nitrogen and a decent amount of oxygen and we're going to try to throw on some more oxygens where esters can form and hopefully that long chain will accept our nitrates to form a flammable compound I'm using 200 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid. This is drain cleaner, but I know it's like 95-ish percent. That works fine for this case. And then I also have 130 grams of ammonium nitrate. So we just take the ammonium nitrate, we add it to the sulfuric acid. You can do this all at once. Do take note that as the ammonium nitrate dissolves in the sulfuric acid, it will heat up the mixture and nitric acid fumes may be released. They typically do, depending on the temperature around the solution. You'll have a higher chance if it heats up a lot, but for the most part, if you're not breathing right over it, you should be fine. We're going to put this on a hot plate, get it stirring so all this dissolves real quickly. And once that's all dissolved, we should be able to start the nitration. Okay, so I might have miscalculated nitrating keratin. Clearly we have a reaction that is occurring that is not the slow and easy ester reaction or ester formation that I predicted. We are getting some nitrogen oxides coming off of here and I'd like to see what's going on. Hopefully we don't ruin our reaction mixture. So I've turned on stirring and the mixture is slowly turning a sort of red-orange color. I'm not seeing as much nitrogen dioxide formation as before, but I predict that this red-orange color is actually attributed to the reaction that takes place. I forget the name of it. It's a, it's a reaction to test for the presence of amino acids, I believe. But same thing occurs in the skin when nitric acid reacts with the skin and it discolors it turns it orangish yellow that can be enhanced through the addition of a little bit of base a strong base it will turn it more orange than yellow but I think that's what's happening here in larger quantities and that's what's floating around in the mixture okay so some updates on the nitrated hair we really don't have any hair left over we get this fluid that is hair juice and I don't really know what to do with it I've tried precipitating it out in cold water by neutralizing it in ethanol none of it does anything uh, and I really don't think that I'm gonna be able to get anything out of this I think all the proteins and keratin just kind of dissociated with one another and nitrated in their own different ways forming a, a slurry of different nitration products and I don't think any of them are going to be able to easily be separated and I don't think it's the, worth the effort so 
The rest of this video, I'm just gonna go over how I nitrate my cotton, and I'm gonna go over the different levels of nitration that you can nitrate cotton. So to nitrate the cellulose, I have two nitration solutions. Both are identical nitration solutions. And the one on the left is 50 milliliters of sulfuric acid, approximately. And the one on the right is 300. The rest of the volume attributes to the ammonium nitrate that I put in. The one on the left, I'm gonna put in some nitrocellulose that I made before, and I'm going to try to nitrate it again. A little bit to be said about this nitrocellulose is it came from cotton balls that were all rolled up like this, and the centers didn't get fully nitrated. But what I've done with the cotton going, in, going into this nitration solution is I've unrolled them all up so they're all nice and fluffy. And hopefully that will prevent any bits from getting unnitrated. So in many nitrations, it's very important to have a lot of cooling. There are some exclusions to that rule, but for the most part, nitrocellulose will dissolve if it's heated while it's nitrating, and you don't want that to happen. So I am going to cool this down, and uh, I'll do that after I add the cellulose. You wanna make sure that you get rid of any air pockets. Any air pockets will cause the nitrocellulose to be impure and you're probably gonna have areas where no nitric acid got there at all. So I've placed the two beakers into an ice bath. Not a lot of ice, but it's kind of cold out here, so that should work fine. And both of them are thoroughly soaked in the nitrating solution, or at least the, the cotton is fully soaked in it. And just really make sure that all air bubbles are gone because I think that's the biggest factor in determining whether you're going to get a good yield of pure nitrocellulose or not. And at this point, I'm gonna let it cool down right before uh, like midnight tonight. I'm gonna add a bunch of ice again and it should be good by morning. By morning, I should be good to take it all out throw in a five gallon bucket and wash thoroughly wash it out in some uh, in some water, maybe even basify it. Okay, it's been roughly 12 hours since I put the cotton and nitrocellulose into their respective nitration baths. And now I'm going to dump them out into this bucket of water and we'll wash it around, try to get all the acid out of the, the cellulose. The pH of the water in this bucket is quite acidic, so we're going to dump this out, refill it again, blast it with some more water, and repeat until we get down to an acidic pH of around like four or five. That way we can just add some sodium bicarbonate to neutralize the solution. And after three washings, we are practically neutral, but just to enhance the color of the flame, I'm going to bring in some sodium ions by adding some sodium bicarbonate. You don't have to add a lot. And just get it all dissolved in there. To quickly dry out the nitrocellulose, I'm putting it on top of a fan that's propped up on some pieces of wood. And I've put this, this piece of mesh in between the fan and the nitrocellulose just for the sake of preventing the little tiny bits of nitrocellulose from getting chopped up by the fan or blown somewhere. And this will work pretty well. In the past, it's taken me roughly three to four hours to completely dry out a batch of nitrocellulose. And right here I got the double nitrated cellulose. Over here I have the single nitrated cellulose. I've had the stuff drying for the past three hours. Now it's time to do some testing with it. 
Here I have some of the nitrocellulose that was only nitrated once. Uh, the difference between this and the other stuff that I had already nitrated was this was unrolled. We'll see what kind of difference that makes. A good way to test if it's good nitrocellulose or not is to put it on your hand and then to put a flame to it. If it leaves ash and burns your hand, then it's not good, but I mean, it clearly worked. We'll try that again. Leaves little to no residue. How about we try a bigger piece? Now, although that was a big flame, it only lasted for a very short amount of time, so it wasn't enough time that the heat could transfer into my skin. Now I'm going to drop a piece of nitrocellulose over top of the flame and see how quickly it combusts. And if I saw that correctly, it burned up completely before I even hit this table. Although nitrocellulose is quite fun to play with, it also has practical applications. So when dissolved in acetone and completely dried out, it forms a thin film known as celluloid, which used to be used to make film for cinemas and movie theaters and stuff. Celluloid also finds its use in ping pong balls, which are highly flammable due to the nitrocellulose content. 